Hello everyone, I am Dr. Ramakhandi Dash, a general surgeon, a general general prescription surgeon and I am welcoming you all to this video and today's video will be on a, another topic on swelling and that is fixity as well as mobility and in my clinical practice I found that things the most important and most difficult portion of an uh, examination of an swelling. And regarding the front page picture, that is my last day work at Select M.A.J. Osman Medical College Hospital as an assistant register. And I have worked there for five years or more. And that period was awesome. And I have, I'm, I will thank God that I got some brilliant surgeon as my colleagues, as well as I have found mentors like SM Gulam Rahman sir and as well as Kaya Janayalam sir and I am very grateful to all of my teachers. Okay, so let's start our journey and before starting, please subscribe the channel as well as comment after watching. A disclaimer and the warning shots like now mobility. First we will start with the mobility. Mobility that means whether the swelling is mobile or not and mobility will be assessed by on two directions. One is axis of that horizontal axis, another one is vertical or anteroposterior axis. Like this swelling is mobile and that is mobile on both in transverse and vertical directions. Look at again. This is the transverse direction mobility. And that is vertical or anterior posterior direction mobility. So swelling is mobile in both directions. Okay. And if you find any swelling restricted in any direction, then you should mention it in your description as well. Now thing, what causes a swelling to be mobile? Like we found lipoma is very mobile. Even fibroderm of the breast is very mobile. We call it a breast mouse also. Why? So, to be a swelling mobile, the surface should be slippery, as well as the content should also be slippery, okay. Lipoma is containing content of uh, adipose tissue, which is actually fat, and you all know that fat is a slippery substance. That's why the lipoma moves, as well as the fibroadenoma, the glandular structures, and the rest contains of huge amount of fats. That's why moves rapidly and you know the swelling that is smaller that will be more mobile the swelling that has got no attachment no adhesion no inflammation that will be more mobile okay say for example that sebaceous cyst sebaceous cyst the fixity it is fixed to skin that's why that swelling will be less mobile as that is fixed to the skin the upper side is fixed even if any swelling is intramuscular like lipoma that is intramuscular that is between the two muscle layers muscle compartments also so that will be less mobile a subcutaneous lipoma that has no attachment with the muscles or anything that will be more mobile so if that swelling has got no attachment then that will be more mobile Okay, so I think that mobility you should go for the transverse direction mobility and anterior posterior or vertical direction mobility. Okay, that's okay. In interpretation will be the swelling is mobile, and if it is uh, restricted in any direction, you may mention that sir, mobility restricted in the anterior posterior vertical direction, but mobile in horizontal direction. Okay, so for example, you will find that in case of neurofibroma. In neofibroma, the swelling will be more mobile or mobile in the axis of the nerve and less mobile across the axis of the nerve. Okay. Now that another thing is fixity. And that fixity is of is two types. One is the swelling will fix to the overlying skin. And another will be the fixed tumor will be fixed to the underlying structures. And this overlying skin, if in, if you find that any swelling is fixed to the overlying skin, that means that swelling is arising from the skin. That means the swelling has arisen from the epidermis or dermis of the skin. 
there are more layers, two layers mainly, and the epidermis is also divided into five layers. So any swelling arising from that layers will be fixed to the uh, skin actually, like sebaceous cyst or anything arising from the epidermis, epidermal tumors, they will be fixed to the skin. Uh, another thing is that the swelling has infiltrating the skin. That means the swelling is in the deeper plane, like any, like that uh, intravascular lipoma or something. Or especially that is for the carcinoma. So for example, carcinoma of the breast, you know, the carcinoma is defined by TNM classification, T is for the size, tumor size, okay. And you know, the T in case of carcinoma breast is T1, T2, T3, T4. Okay? The, the more advanced the T stays, the T is more advanced. So that means the T4 stage is more advanced. Clear? And this T4 stage in case of carcinoma breast, okay? that interprets that the swelling, the breast lump is fixed to the skin. So, the tumor was in the deeper plane, but as the tumor enlarges in size, if it enlarges towards the skin side, and then if it will infiltrate the skin, the tumor, the skin will be infiltrated by the tumor, then that swelling will be fixed with the skin. So, in case of a malignant tumor, if it, it gets fixed to the skin, that means the disease is locally advanced. Okay, that is a very good important important criteria for defining locally advanced tumor. Okay. So how to assess the skin fixity? That is very simple. Look at the video first. This is the tumor. There is a tumor. And I am going to pinch and look at that there is a falling. That means the skin can be pinched. So if we find that we can pinch the swelling, that means that means that we can pinch the large amount or larger amount of skin. That means indicates the swelling is in deeper plane. Okay? Like in intramuscular lipoma, we can pinch the swelling in large amount. Okay, but if we cannot pinch the swelling, that indicates the swelling is superficial level. Like in sebaceous cyst, the swelling is superficial level, so we cannot pinch the skin properly. Okay, look at the video again. Let's pinch and you can pinch the swelling. Okay, so I think clear. Then there is another video and we will need to know about the fixity to the underlying structures and underlying structures means that the tumor may be fixed with the muscle layers, the nerves, the artery or vessels, even to the bones. Okay. So how to demonstrate? First of all, we need to assess the fixity and relax it, like the example as well as the mobility. The way you have examined the mobility, that same thing will be done for assessing the relaxed state fixity. Okay. Then you need to contract the muscle. So to examine the fixity, you need to know that what is the function of that muscle. Okay. So you need to ask the patient to do the function. Say the flexor groups of muscle forearm, you need to ask the patient to flex his hand. Or if the swelling in the extensor surface, you need to ask him to for extension. Like it is a supinator muscle. So you need to look ask for a supination of the forearm, forearm. So you need to know the the swelling is over which group of muscle and what is the function of that thing. And you need to ask the patient to do the function to make the muscle contracted. After that, uh, you, you should inspect. First, okay, if that muscle or if that swelling is superficial to that muscle group, the swelling will be more visible. Okay, like you in case of a abdominal lump. Hmm, first of all, 
uh, there is a lump in the abdomen so first thing that abdominal lump can be in parietal parietal that means that it's outside of the inter peritoneal covering there are lots of layers in the abdomen you know and the swelling can be intraperitoneal okay. okay so first we need to uh, watch that that on inspection we can differentiate a parietal swelling of the abdomen from the intraperitoneal swelling how we call it a carnet test we just ask the patient to raise his or her head or leg head raising test or leg raising test that head raising or leg raising will contract the abdominal muscle muscles like external oblique muscles internal oblique muscles okay and if that swelling get more prominent okay, more visible then that indicates that the parietal swelling that means the swelling is arising from the suavicial layer of uh, layer suavicial to the muscle that's why it get more prominent or if the swelling is intraperitoneal then after head raising or leg raising that swelling will be diminishing in size okay so on inspection we should find that whether the swelling is getting more prominent or it is getting it is diminishing in size then we need to palpate okay we need to palpate the after contraction we need to give a resistance also after contracting a patient will contract the muscle then you need to give resistance and if he has to work against your resistance that will make the muscle more contracted okay so let's go for the video now so three function actually first of all the relaxed state that is similar to the mobility then the muscle contraction the muscle movement and third is give resistance against the muscle movement so look for the video this is relaxed state the swelling is very mobile in both in transverse and horizontal direction mm, vertical then movement and resistance and look at the contracted muscle now the swelling is less mobile okay so see it again mobile in both directions muscle movement flexion give resistance look for the contracted muscle muscle is contracted now less mobility that means the swelling is arisen from muscle okay if that swelling has arisen superficial to the muscle then there will be no difference between the contracted or relaxed mobility the swelling will be equally mobile, mobile even in contracted state as that mobility is restricted in contracted state that indicates that the swelling has arisen from muscle clear okay now if any swelling is fixed to the artery or vein in nerve what will happen like that needle of abnormal if i ask art that is say for example it is the forearm okay and you are finding swelling here and about the distribution of the median nerve and you know the median nerve passes in parallel to the forearm okay so that neurofibroma may arise from the endoneurium layer of the median nerve so what will be the how will the mobility then the swell, swelling will be more mobile in the direction perpendicular to the linear structure so that is the linear structure median nerve its direction is towards that side okay and the perpendicular side is the horizontal side so if we move, see the mobility so the swelling will be more mobile so that is the direction so that will be more mobile in the transverse direction as the direction or axis of the nerve is vertical so swelling will be more mobile in the 
transverse direction or horizontal direction okay that will indicate that the swelling has arisen from the neurovascular structure it can be artery it can be vein mostly it is from the nerve endoneurum of the nerve which you call it neurofibroma clear okay and if the swelling has arisen from the tendon what will happen then tendon like biceps tendon there is more muscles which ends in tendon and if the swelling is arising from the tendon in that case while it is visible in on inspection okay say for is the tendon of the flexor group the swelling is arising from the that and on inspection when you contract the muscle when you ask the patient to flex his hand then that will move that swelling will move proximally proximally that means towards the elbow towards upwards okay it will move proximally and when you will see that the swelling is mobile and that is moved proximally that indicates that that swelling is arising from the tendon okay there are some other thing that uh, that you have found that mobility is restricted upon contraction that indicates the swelling has arisen from muscle layer clear even you may found that the swelling is restricted the mobility of the swelling is restricted even in relaxed state so what does that mean if you find any swelling mobility is restricted even in relaxed state that indicates that swelling has arisen from bones bones is not mobile so that indicate the swell that may be bony swelling like osteoderma or enchondroma that swelling will be not mobile even in relaxed state clear even if you if any malignant infiltration so for example a malignant tumor which is locally advanced and encircled all layers the skin the muscle layers as well as the neurovascular structure it is encased every structures from the skin to the soft tissues in that case also the swelling will be not mobile even in relaxed state okay so relaxed state mobility less mobile or immobile swelling that swelling will be arisen from the bones or that may be malignant tumor in which case the malignancy has encased all layers including skin muscle and neurovascular structure in the bones also okay so i think you guys have gone through the lecture thoroughly and that may have helped you bit okay so i think that you should know the anatomy properly if you want to know the anatomy properly you will know the function of the muscle group and without knowing the function of that muscle group you cannot perform the fixity so for clinical examination or examination of lump knowing the anatomical details function of that muscle or muscle groups is very essential so without that you cannot perform that fixity so if you have found that video helpful please subscribe my channel and support me thank you very much for watching thank you